Hello chess fans. In today's video, I'm going to show you a game between Louis Bordenas and Alexander McDonald. Unfortunately, I was not able to find a picture of Alexander McDonald, so I just put a smiley face there. So the game started off with e4, c5, knight f3, knight c6, d4, cxd, knight xd4, and e5, the Lowenthal variation of the Sicilian. So here, if we are seeing a master game, we might see knight b5, or sometimes even knight b3 as uh, plausible moves. But here we saw the dubious move by white, knight takes c6. And so this is a move we have often see by beginners. The reason why it is bad is it because it voluntarily bl brings one of black's pawns, which is on the side, the b pawn, into the center. And so black takes the opportunity. And now if you can look at the position, you can see that d5 is on the cards now, and it's probably going to happen soon. So we see bishop c4 controlling the d5 square, knight f6, attacking the e-pawn and controlling the d5 square, and bishop g5. This knight is pretty strong, controlling two squares. This bishop can't really do anything much, so white opts to get rid of the bishop for the knight. So bishop e7, unpinning, queen e2. This move was kind of confusing. It got rid of a defender of the this square, but I was guessing white is hoping to have some pressure along the e-file. d5, takes, takes. Here, white opts to not allow the knight to get any more pressure and bishop b3 you don't really want to take here immediately because black then just has a huge center bishop b3 castles castles and so here you might be wondering why doesn't black take because after something like takes takes white is actually doing very well here with knight c3 rook d1 coming this bishop is bad this bishop doesn't really have anywhere good to go and this pawn is very weak so here white would be significantly better Instead, we see a5 trying to trap the bishop. Exd, if he takes back, sorry, if he plays a5, bishop c4, we still have a square for our bishop. Cxd4, and rook d1 attacking this pawn here. So if he plays a5, we'll take this with our bishop. So we see d4, removing the pawn from attack, and no longer threatening a5 because now our bishop still has c4. And we see c4 here. Not entirely sure what this move does. Instead, what I would like to see from black, or sorry, from white, is something like c3, which immediately attacks the center, though this still is a very tough position for white to play. So c4, bishop a6, queen b6, and bishop c2. And so there's actually a tactic as to why you can't take here. See if you can find it. This tactic appears a lot more times in the game. It's after queen xb2, we have bishop x8 7 takes here, and we win the queen back. So instead, black plays bishop b7, knight d2, rook a e8, threatening to push the pawns up the board, knight e4, attacking the bishop, and also preparing c5. And here, uh, sorry, after instead of after knight d2, white black can't take this pawn because after queen xb2, queen d3, threatening a mate here, g6, protecting the mate, rook a b1, e4, takes, 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 and or sorry, takes, takes, rook xb2, takes, takes. And here, uh, what's it called? White is doing very fine. White is probably drawing this game, and the engine actually prefers white slightly. So instead, we saw rook a8, knight e4, bishop d8, a nice move, rerouting the bishop this to this side, c5, attacking the queen. And again, he can't take this time. He can't take this time because after here, we just win the whole uh, bishop. So instead, we see queen c6, threatening f5, and then a mate, f3. Bishop e7, rook ac1, and f5, attacking the knight. And the knight doesn't really have anywhere good to go, but white spots a tactic here, which actually doesn't work. Queen c4, king h8, and bishop a4, seemingly winning the exchange. But after queen, x, queen h6, bishop x e8, fx e8, fx e4, sorry. And now black is going to basically march these pawns up the board. And so white has to deal with this, so he plays c6 if takes takes then uh, white would be winning and if black moves his bishop back then white would also be significantly better but black here stuns white and plays exf3 a beautiful move if he were to take on b7 we would see queen e3 king f1 takes takes and a quick mate so after takes he played rook c2 a good move and we see queen e3 check and so here, white moves his king to h1, which is actually a blunder, because after bishop c8, he defends his bishop. We see another great move, f2, simply advancing the pawn, threatening queen e1 check, and d3, d2. 
Rook f1, attacking the pawn, and here we see another great move, d3, marching the pawns further up the board. Rook c3, supposedly pinning the pawn, but after bishop xd7, cxd7, e4, defending the pawn, queen c8, threatening to take the rook and then promote, we see another beautiful move, bishop d8, simply blocking the queen's connection with the rook. Queen c4, there's not really much white can do in this position, the position is already pretty hopeless. Queen c5 would have been a better attempt, but after the simple queen xc5, rook xc5, e3, you can already see that black, sorry, black is clearly winning in this position. White is having a very tough time. So instead we see queen c4, queen e1, threatening the rook, white defends his rook, and d2, another spectacular move, sacrificing the queen now two times, but the pawns are defending it. Queen c5, attacking the rook, maybe going for a cheapo. And here's something that some people who are careless might do is king g8. This is a good move, but it's like, why would you ever allow this check? There's really no need to do this. So instead, he plays rook g8. We see rook d1, not really doing much except uh, preventing this take. e3 now, threatening e2. And black has just marched his pawns all up the board. Queen c3. And now, see if you can find the mate in 7. It's a very, it's a pretty easy mate to find, but the entire mate is pretty hard. So the mate in 7 actually is what pl was played in the game, but white resigned in time. So queen xd1, rook xd1, e2. And here, to survive the longest, white has to play h4. And after exd8, queen, king h2, queen, queen c4, and queen xc4, white can't really last any longer because after g3, queen d2 check, king g1, and queen d1 mate. Look, black has three queens here. I'm sure white didn't want to allow that. So after rook xd1, e2, black actually resigned the game. So this is a classical game in which Louis Bernan showed how to use the central majority in the Sicilian. If you like this video, please remember to leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.